Hello friends, this is Cold Run. Welcome back to a blind playthrough of Final Fantasy XIV's Dawn Trail expansion, where we're here continuing with the MSQ with the Leap to Yacht to Elf. Altano. Uh, Altano seems eager to review your journey thus far. Yeah, that seemed like a good stopping point last time. I'm sure the others will be along shortly. I do hope everyone has rested well. It's been about a week since I played. Like a business week, maybe six, six, five, six days, something like that. Just because I've been away seeing visiting family. And so I appreciate the catch up they're going to have if, if this is going to be one of those road so far episodes to pull from supernatural and general culture. Now that we've refreshed ourselves somewhat, let us consider all claimants as they currently stand. Zeralja and Kona have completed every feat thus far and hold five keystones apiece. Oh, I didn't see. It. I don't know what happened there. Uh, I didn't mean to look past that. What did he say? What did they say? Wuklamat would be equal to them, but for Bakul Jaja's thievery, which has left us one short. Right, so Wuklamat and Zoro uh, sorry, Kona and Zoraldra have been basically following our path. Bakul Jaja is the real wild card in terms of actual, like, pure quest progress. That conniving braggart didn't so much as lift a finger for the feet of proof and wreaked havoc with the feet for the feet of ice. He can't have more than three keystones at once. At most. I really am. I'd be really shocked if they I get that if they overlook that. If they don't just on pure sense of as a sit the acts you committed as a, as a citizen like should get you arrested and and disqualified. I, I'd be, it's, it's a little bit, it's, it's surprising that they're not, that's, that's not the end of Bakul Jaja's road. He's become like public, like a public enemy, let alone a candidate. Uh, I guess we'll see. We, we haven't seen the King's, uh, the Dawn Servant's reaction to that. He may think he can simply steal what he needs to win, but he's sorely mistaken. I will be taking back what is mine. This I swear. Hell yeah. I, and I wouldn't be surprised if at some point we got a Bakul Jaja -Ja trial. I th though maybe that would be no, there's ways around. I was going to say, like, would they do that be if, if it means like doing eight on one? Like, it's not really fa a fair fight, but, you know, we're all about the power of teamwork and I I'm OK with that. I fear that reclaiming your keystone may not be enough. That is, if Bakul Jaja's unleashing of Valagarmanda is any indication. Like, that he's willing to go to any extreme and just do anything? Using his lead, I anticipate he will move to obtain the remaining keystones before disrupting his rival's attempts. Because it's not just eight keystones you need, right? It, it's not just, you need, like, the specific ones. So you can't just steal every ones and from the early stages. We may all find ourselves being forced to take from one another. Yeah, Wuklama wouldn't do that. Can't say I'd be comfortable with that. I bet there's I could see a situation where you lend your keystones, where you where you give them voluntarily to others. Like I could see a situation where Kona like gives his to Wuklama, or vice versa, where Wuklama gives his to gives hers to Kona to help one of them get ahead of Bakul Jaja. Or Zoraldra. But neither will I surrender my claim to the throne so easily. If it's for the sake of preserving the happiness of my people, I'll do what I must. The last two keystones we require are those of the Lay of Repast and the Lay of the Brotherhood. I have no memory of what those are. The f oh, thank you. Uh, the former depicts the cessation of hostilities between the Mamulja and, Sh and Shabral in the forests of Yakta'el. Specifically near a village called Ikbrach. I'm just going to call it Ikbrach. I will, will brush. Ikbrach? We'll, I'm sure we'll hear it soon enough. That's where I was born, if you recall. I haven't been back there since Papa took me in when I was a baby. Yeah, we're going to see other, other Rothgar. Other Chabral. Where the Lay of Brotherhood takes place, however, is unclear. In the saga, it is said that a foreign explorer came seeking... That's the guy we've heard his name a couple times. I forget it now, but I, I'm, I'd recognize when to see it. A foreign explorer came seeking an audience with the Dawn Servant, but little more than that. Unless this is Galuf. Galuf? <laughs> Ketenram, that's who it was. But it could be Ketenram or it could be Galuf. 
it's vague enough that it could go either way. But it's probably Ketanrom because we still have to deal with like that undersea. They mentioned that undersea beast, and that seems like perfect for a trial. Uh, Eorzea has a similar tale. The explorer Ketanrom befriended a two headed king known as the Autark before commencing his travels across Taral. He journeyed here several times afterwards, but was ultimately lost at sea. At least, that's the commonly held belief. We're 100% meeting Ketanrom, aren't we? Your two-headed king certainly sounds like Papa. So this Ketanrom fellow must have come to Tuli Hulal. Papa wasn't the Autark, though. But if he indeed arrived some 80 years ago, the capital may not have been built yet. Vestiges of Yaqui architecture notwithstanding. Wait, you said Autark, didn't you? Then Ketanra must have met the Dawn Servant in Mamuk. Mamuk? That's gotta be the, like, the lizard city? Lizard capital or something? Mamuk, is that a city? I don't know, I don't, I don't have her voice at all, and I can't do British accents at all, let alone distinguish between high-pitched ones like her, Alizé, and Alphano. Not like Alizé is really high-pitched. Uh... One of the grandest in Tural, once upon a time, and the seat of the Mamuljah's homeland. It too lies in Yakta El, not far from Ikrash. Then all things considered, Yakta El seems the only obvious choice for our next destination. From here, the safest message, method of dirigible. We get balloon travel. Method of travel will dirigible. We should make for the landing once the, our preparations are complete. We're riding one of Kona's balloons? They can't be any worse than ships, can they? No, I mean, I don't think you have the same... You don't have seasickness to worry about. You just have vertigo. And air pressure changes. When I was a kid, I would have that all the time. I would just be crying on airplanes because the pain from um, from the air pressure changes that wouldn't get relieved. I know some people said chew gum or swallow. And as an adult, that works. But as a kid, that did not work. It just built and built until it was this, this constant pain. I don't think we're going that high, though. So I, I'm not as worried about this. I'm sure they have better meals on board these dirigibles than I, they have on American Airlines. Are, are we sure that thing will stay in the air all the way to Yachtael? Fear of flying is completely understandable. Like, it's... I feel like I just have to pretend science isn't a thing. And I get that it's there. But it doesn't make... Com it doesn't make logical sense to me. It doesn't make, like, make like common on its face sense. I've seen the videos, you know, the, the air pushes a thing up or whatever, but... It's bizarre, and I just don't think about it. Are you ready? Bags packed and good goodbye said. There's no going back once we lift off. It's we'll be okay. Not that I'm nervous or anything. I'm just making sure you're not nervous. <laughs> that little like look away face. <laughs> oh, who am I kidding? My knees won't stop shaking. Will you hold my hand <laughs> just until I've settled my nerves? Of course. Ask Aaronville. Screw that. We're not turning down the chance to hold her hand, even if it's in, uh, even if it's just for this. You're the nicest person I've ever met, Kakushu. I'll try not to crush her hand. That's a fair point. I'm pretty sure that if she crush, if she holds my hand, like, in fear or pain, like, we're coming back with just a, a flesh-covered ball of, of bone powder. Mom Blue, there she is. Third promise. Wait just a moment. Who's Mom Blue? Mom Blue's one of the Pelu Pelu. Mom Blue and Toe Blue. Oh, right, right, right. Of course, of course, I'll wait as long as you need. Sorry to delay you, but we were able to discover the origin of Kryle's earring. Oh, holy shit. Okay. The, the clover? Yeah. You said before that it gained popularity in Yokteral as a protective ward for travelers, correct? That's right. We tracked down the elderly merchant to whom first sales are attributed. According to him, the design imitates an accessory worn by a foreign mage. Okay, so the explorer is Ketanrom, probably, and the foreign mage then is Galuf. Gal uh, met at market some 20 years ago. Little did he know that charming taste of salt would prove to be a commercial triumph. 
foreign mage wearing this earring could only be grandfather. Did the merchant happen to mention which market? Yeah, one in Yachtel, of course, I was gonna say. Uh, where it seems you're bound, yeah. With luck, then. With what luck? Then I shall seek my next clue once we arrive. Is it mere coincidence that brought my grandfather there? Or... Yet another discovery to look forward to. Nodders. Thank you both for coming all this way. Yeah, seriously. Anything for the third promise. Good luck with the rest of the right. Thanks, I won't let you down. I've just got to board this dirigible and... And I'm, I'm as good as there. Last call for passengers to Yachtel. Yak is north, Shock is south, right? Or am I mistaken that? No, maybe Yak is south? I don't, oh, we'll check the map in a bit. I really hope she wins. Tobley. Yak Dell will test her metal, no doubt. The next Dawn Servant must be willing to bear the full weight of this nation's history, no matter how heavy it may be. Oh, we're going to dive into the, the sins of empire here, that sort of thing. Oh, look at this. The hunters who laid claim to this land call it the Azure Forest, Yachtel. Battered by meteors in ancient times and colored mesmerizing shades of blue and green by nature, it is easy to understand why the place is so named. I'm getting major Teldrassil vibes for the, the Night Elf starting zone in World of Warcraft. The wisp, it the colors. Where the Shepral and Mamulja once battled for dominance, that the right of succession would reach its climax. Oh, they didn't say. I was considering the Mamulja and who battled for. Dominance must be... I didn't... I didn't see well enough. Like, I heard it, but it just... it didn't, like, you stick right. for me. I've... never been good with heights. Very common. The vegetation is far denser than in Kozamauka. I was calling it Kozamauka, but they're going with Kozamauka. Okay. That's really surprising, Kozamauka. How have I not heard that until now? I, I probably just. I suggest blew you pay off. more attention to the ground, unless you want to walk straight into a cenote. It's a, is that like a quicksand? A cenote. Sinkholes filled with rain and groundwater. Yeah, quicksand. Many meteors fell here long ago. It is said, and after they struck the earth, it became susceptible to erosion. Maybe not quicksand, but something uh, pretty close. Deep as some of the pits are, you'll not climb out in a hurry should you take a tumble. It also might be something that like, leads to an underground section rather than just like you're sucked into the earth and you're going to drown and suffocate. So don't take a tumble. What kills you if you go into if you get sucked in by quicksand? Is it drowning or suffocation? It was one time. Oh no. <laughs> Is the Shabral community depicted in the Lay of Repast close by? Aye. We need but follow the path a short way west. Why repast? Because repast is like a meal, right? Right. I can't stand here with my knees knocking forever. Let's get going. Yeah, we got a whole new zone here. And I think I might have... 
No, no, I don't. I didn't have the next level of hunt yet unlocked. With thicker vegetation comes reduced visibility. I advise you to keep someone in sight at all times. Fair enough. And we're pretty close to the next... The next, uh, what do you call it? The Otomo, Otomo Horizon. Pretty close to the next... Southwest. Yeah, pretty close to the next ether point. But uh, let's get to the let's get there. Ooh. This is just just a general maybe Chabral marking. Mamul Cha marking, I'm not sure. Nick Brosh. Aaronville was not exaggerating about the cenotes. It would be a grueling ordeal to climb out of one. Well, thankfully, we made it here without incident. Let's not dally any longer. Oh, boo, I'm, I'm full on inventory. Okay, I'll be right back. There we go. That is a cleaner inventory. Village of the Hunt. Uglamot's attention is divided between... The Perilously Deep Cenote and Ikbrosh. Wait, this is a Cenote? That's different than what I was imagining. Okay. Ready to head on in? I am. But a Cenote then is okay. Alright, so it's nothing like Quicksand. It's just a giant gap in the... It's just like a... A chasm. A valley, a canyon, I don't know. Our first task could be finding the Elector. Hopefully our relative tardiness will not reflect poorly upon us. I mean, hopefully word has spread about why we're late. Gentle villager. The third promise in her retinue, I presume. You presume right. I seek the Dawn Servant's Elector. Then come and join us in the Garden of Stars at the village center. Everyone is waiting for you. I wonder how they'll receive her. I don't, again, I don't remember exactly why. I don't think she knows exactly why she was abandoned, essentially. Everyone? Who might that be? It's but one way to find out. Come, let us follow him. Like, the people in the village? I, I don't know. Who's that totem of? The thing, the, the carving at the top. It looked like, I don't know, like an owl with like four mechanical arms. I don't know what that was. Oh, the others are, okay. The other candidates are here. At last, we are graced by the presence of the third promise. Save your snark, my friend. If I'd known we'd be waiting on your mangy hide. I wouldn't have bothered with Eligarmanda in the first place. How are you so open about this? You tried to cause massive destruction and death among your people. What do you... Okay. Um, I can't let this sidetrack me because this is clearly going to annoy me if I think about it. self-serving piece of weaver dung. Do you have any idea how many could have been hurt? <clears throat> now that we are assembled... I'll try to let, let it slide. Begin. It's just, it's so, it's annoying that they're letting it slide as if it's just, as if it's just a, a, a hard foul or scrappy competition. My name is In a way, I don't buy. I say, Brash Rash, I have the honor of serving as elector on behalf of my people. As all four claimants Why is she must surprised? be present for this feat. We have eagerly awaited your arrival. Third promise. If you would please join us. Another astounding voice. A really good voice acting choice. I don't know who the voice actor is, but I like what they're doing with it.
Thus far, you have faced each other as rivals. The feat of repast, however, will test your cooperation. Before, before he you said must complete the this challenge in teams of two. Before he said the teams of two thing, I saw them line up in front. I thought it was going to be like a pie eating contest or something. What? You expect us to work with one of these weaklings? Be warned. Only the triumphant team will receive keystones. I advise you to cooperate with your partner. Are we getting paired up with... A so... Immediately, I'm thinking, like, are we going to get paired up with Kona? Because, you know, the good team and the evil team, kind of. But, like, I kind of hope we get paired up with Bakulja Ja or Zaral Ja. Teams will be decided by lots. Okay. Those who draw the same color will be paired accordingly. I'd be very, at this point, I'd be very surprised if they actually pair us up with Kona. Because the possibilities of, like, pairing us up with, with Zaral Ja or Bakulja Ja are far more interesting. Especially by Cool Jaja. -Ja. Twell forbid Wu Klamat is paired with Bakul Jaja. -Ja. <laughs> After all he's put her through, I wouldn't blame her if she did something rash. I might even help. You would absolutely help. Clements, please present your colors. I have red. Cherry gumball. Blue. Blue raspberry. On separate teams, then. And the rest? Red. Which means... Together oh. again. As fate would have it. I'm surprised by that. Surprised and disappointed, but that's how it goes. <laughs> Victories as good as ours. Why would you put that into the universe? Why would you speak those words? You're like strip teasing for fate. You're like begging it for for attention. With our claimants thus paired, so too is their opposition. <sighs> Not the one head. The one head that kicked your ass. Listen well, for the trial that awaits you is as follows. Each team is to prepare a sample of traditional Chebrol cuisine. Oh, hell yes. Chebrook Bibil. Does Zeraldra even have a surprised face? And now we must cook another ludicrous feat. So it might seem, but there's bound to be deeper meaning to it. Agreed. Given that the very future of our nation is at stake, all parts of this rite must have significance. Our promises have grown rather promising, wouldn't you say? I mean, three of them have. One of them is a on the verge of being a mass murderer, if not for uh, the strength of others. Indeed. If I were to guess at the significance of the feat, Few things reflect the history and development of a culture so clearly as its culinary traditions. Fair. The variety of stewed dishes in Galian cuisine bespeaks their agricultural roots and cold climes, true. I'm going to learn how to make a hot dish. Minnesota People's cuisine. People on our journey, they've all had different practices involving food and drink. The Hanuhanu replenish their magical energies with reeds, while the Pelu Pelu have turned their fondness of beverages into a living. And they, this keeps coming. I, I, I said I was, wasn't going to keep harping on it, but I will because they keeps coming up. I love how they keep emphasizing her cultural knowledge, her growing familiarity with the various cultures. So basically, to know a people's cuisine is to know something of their ways. Yes. With each feat, we have deepened our familiarity with a given community's history and culture. 
Is this what Father intended for us all along? But a leader with his vision must see that the past doesn't hold the answers we need. It is through embracing innovation, not adhering to tradition, that we will usher Tuli Yolal onto a more prosperous future. But it doesn't, embracing innovation doesn't mean you become unmoored from tradition necessarily. It doesn't have to mean that. I mean, some traditions are probably worth, are of course worth unmooring from, but not all of them. Yeah, maybe this means that you end up using like a slow cooker for like like a crock pot for your long stews instead of the thing I, instead of like just stewing it on like over a cook, open open fire but i don't know it doesn't mean you have to abandon the recipe was that a yawn i think that was the a yawn are simple the first team to prepare and partake of satisfactory Shebrook Bivir will be deemed victorious. You will be judged by your sample's taste and appearance, as well as your adherence to appropriate cooking techniques. Oh, Kona's not going to necessarily like that. Kitchens have been made available for your use. Note that you may be asked to retry should your dish fail to pass muster. Let the feet of repast begin. Excuse me. I've never actually heard of Shibruk Bibil before. It's a light, I wonder. So they're going off individually. Maybe they're going to meet up together. But it looked like they were kind of going there as one rather than the, the, the two lizardy folk were going individually rather than immediately teaming up. How fortunate it is that this feat's unique stipulations have frustrated Bakul Jaja's attempts to delay us. That's right, there was a hard stop. They had to actually wait until everyone got here, though I'm not sure why. I don't know what about this was required us all to be here to start at the same time. I guess it's the first team. It's because it's a, it's a team thing, that's why. Serves him right. That's what he gets for endangering my people with his schemes. With his mischievous little pranks. Like unleashing the... Never mind, never mind. Nope, don't get down that rat, rabbit hole. Why doesn't he just compete fairly? He's plenty strong and obviously has a mind for strategy, twisted though it may be. I'll never understand him. I'm guessing it's because he feels his people were, were given, were treated really unfairly, and so he has to use those same methods to get back, to get them power again. Putting aside our competition for the moment, allow me to express how glad I am for this opportunity to work together. As I see it, our team possesses a distinct advantage. Of course we do. Any team I'm on is bound to succeed. I'm sure that's what he was talking about. <laughs> Precisely. Sure. Why not? <laughs> you mean we have an advantage in numbers, yes? I love that shocked cat face they occasionally give for her, like she just had for a second there. Our competition has a team of six. Two claimants, Saril Ja and Bakul Ja Ja's lackeys. Whereas we have a team of nine. That's three more people we can mobilize. With the tasks suitably delegated, it should be a brisk affair to learn the recipe and assemble necessary ingredients. Too easy. Why would you... Okay. All right. Have you not... Is she not a cooker? Maybe she doesn't cook a lot. Because I've seen how much cooking can fail. Let alone, like, a deeply significant cultural dish. Uh... Well, we mustn't be overconfident, lest we make a careless mistake that could have been easily avoided. Our first order of business should be determining the recipe for Shibruk Bibil. We can hardly gather ingredients for a dish we know nothing about. Given the nature of the feat, asking for answers more directly may prove less effective than simply observing the daily habits of the Shibral people. 
Let us gather here once we seen, have seen what clues this village has to offer. Fastidious fellow, what are you doing? The recipe for Shabruk Pibil? I wish I could tell you, friend. A dish so delicious is meant to be shared. Alas, we are forbidden from divulging anything. Orders from Hunmu Ruk himself. But your mentioning it to me has given me a fierce craving. craving. I only hope there's still Ibru to be had at market. Wink. Thank you. Alright, so we need some Ibruk. Whatever Ibruk is. Could be anything. Uh... This is some sort of wrestling? They are certainly locked in a struggle. Oh, you know what? We've had this game as a kid, but it was different. Instead of, as a, game, as a kid, it was a slapping game. It was you had to slap the other person's hands and knock them over. Or knock, make them make them wobble backwards, make them like lose their footing. Yeah, they're keeping, they're trying hard to keep their footing. You just slap them as hard as possible, and one of the strategies was like you'd make induce them to make like a really hard slap, and then you back off so that they would topple forward. But here it seems like it's that, but we're trying to push the other person. Oh wait, what do you watch? What are you doing? What flavor would that be? Are you having any luck? No, they're just researching. Hubigo Guardian. We have to cut our losses and head to Mamuk. Speed is nothing but a fool's errand. You're the fool if you think he won't tan our hides for leather if we dare to return without enough keystones. Besides, we've taken from the house cat before. How difficult will the second time be? It's, you're not, it's not how, salt liquor. Mind your own business. Who are you calling salt liquor? I do like my salt, but. What a stray, I, I, I know, is that a reference, I guess, being across the salt? Salt liquor. I, I don't know what to make of that. That's a weird one. That's a weird insult. Ooh, sightseeing log here. At some point, I'm going to go back, uh, go back and grab these. Maybe some point soon. From the other areas. Ik Ikbrosh. Standing on the edge of a cenote in the midst of a dense, for of dense forest, the Shabral's home village has a clear open, clearing open for the, to the sky for stargazing. The name of the settlement means Red Brosh, a fierce beast related to the Curl, and this bold shade is painted liberally upon the walls of their wooden dwellings. Yeah, so that's why that's why it's that's why this place is so red themed. Okay. Colorful spices. A number of spices, un some entirely unfamiliar to you, are nestled in the basket. That one's called Achiote. We mostly use it to add a bit of color to our <clears throat> most popular cuisine, but its medicinal benefits are significant as well. Building up a mini set of ingredients, at least. A bright bit. Look at the friggin' saber tooth tigers there. Oh, those are brushes. Look at the saber tooth. Hey, a tiger brush is like just beyond the village's edge, just chilling out in full view of cooking. Got to be a terrifying cook space. Bright banana peel. An unusually colored banana peel has been neatly arranged on the ground, which appears to be smoking. Oh no, it appears I've gone and dropped my najul. I mean, Jatika banana peel. I could barely see it for all the steam issuing from my underground oven is that what a tandoor is 
I definitely heard of underground ovens. What what culture uses underground ovens? I thought India, but I might be mistaking it. Uh, ah, there's nothing like enjoying a tasty banana while you use the leaves in your cooking. <laughs> I love how they're, they take it seriously, but they really want to help us. They have to give some hints and they're trying. Sorry, sorry, I'm back. Welcome back. What did we discover about Shabruk Pibil? Due to your predictions, the, villager, the villagers were forbidden from educating us uh, directly. However, many were still preparing it as one might a staple dish, and observing of their techniques, observation of their techniques yielded clues enough. A lady blending local herbs and spices was only too happy to describe the ones I didn't recognize, while neither confirming nor denying any relation to Shabruk Pibil. But one in particular she attributed to all common Shabral dishes. Achiote, she called it. I see. Then if Shabruk Bibiel is indeed a dish as ubiquitous as Alphano claims, we have confirmed our first ingredient. Meanwhile, I did observe a cook burying bundles wrapped in the leaf of the Najul, or banana in certain localities. It would seem the use of subterranean ovens is commonplace. I saw the same! I think we all know what's inside those bundles then, don't you? Ibrook, without a doubt. A sizzling slab of beef. It smells so good it practically tasted it. The squeaky flesh of a bipedal fish. We're just gonna go with the brook, without a doubt. You know what? No, well, let's go with the ridiculous answer. The squeaky flesh of, flesh of a bipedal fish. That's clearly what was in there. What kind of creature is that? There seem to be more hunters than fishers here, so I think we're looking for a different meat, you fool. But I'd be keen to give it a try next time. Oh yeah, it broke. Without a doubt. As one would as would be expected of a dish called Shibruk Pibil. Indeed. So to summarize, the dish is one of a brook. Flavored with a combination of spices that include achiote, and steamed underground with najul or banana leaves. Given our assumptions are correct, we must now learn where and how to procure our ingredients. As a staple cuisine, its ingredients would be close at hand, which is why Thancred and I scouted the surrounding forest while you were all exploring the village. Between the local vegetation and wild brook, we should have everything we need in regard to meat and spices. Leave it to a master gleaner. It's true. This is a great time for time for uh, Aaronville to shine. One of the many. With that, we should divvy up our our tasks. While some gather ingredients, others should make ready the kitchen. I can help prepare the kitchen. Permit me to assist as well. Our ovens will doubtless require firewood, and I have some experience in its gathering. Is that from uh, Hyman Garlemald? Or something else. Is there? It feels like it's a reference to something, but I can't think of what. I too should be glad to val volunteer my aid. And the rest of us will gather ingredients. I could make quick work of spices and herbs myself. I am happy to lend someone, lead someone to a suitable Ebro, if they will perform the requisite deed. Alice. As for the Najul leaves, I believe I'm capable of acquiring that much of my own. But be warned, you won't find Najul in these parts. They only grow in the Jatika heartland, forests far below these. Hmm, such an excursion may be time-consuming. Perhaps we ought to try bartering first. Oh, actually smart. This feat encourages our com communication with the locals, after all. Lamati, Kushu, if you would accompany on my errand. Accompany me on my errand. Alright, so we're going to be helping with the bartering. No better way to whet my appetite. Good, let us be about our tasks then. This makes me want to rewatch Food Wars. I never got through the uh, fifth season, it seemed like it was going... I saw the first couple of episodes and it seemed like it was going really off the rails compared to the stuff I liked before, but... I don't know, let me know if I'm mistaken if you're a Food Wars fan. If it's worth seeing.
<clears throat> Come on, let's go and get those Najul leaves. The sooner we do, the sooner we can eat. Chest gear, all right. Just got it for my 93 Viper, uh, rather than Pictomancer, because my gear is already 660. A history of violence. Kona has the look of a man intent on finding bananas. We all know that look. Let's see if there are Najul leaves to be had in town. Perhaps the cookery Anjay mentioned might be persuaded to spare us a few. We probably want more than a few. Like, we want to have some backups, because I assume we're going to have some, some failure, dish failures. I don't think we're going to get it right on the first try. It depends on what they're looking for. They might be looking for just, have you gotten the basics down? Because I can't imagine they're looking for us to really master the dish this quickly. I can imagine that. I just, I don't think they're going to do that. Cheerful cook. Oh, hello again. Did you need something? Not jewel leaves, you say? For purposes other than Shabruk Pibil, naturally. Uh, unfortunately, I've just used my last. You'll have to travel to the lower forest for more. Golmajik, Gro Golmajik Grove is the source of the finest Najul leaves you'll find. Wild variants you sometimes see in city markets can't compare. I see. I'd hoped to avoid such a lengthy venture, but if there's no other way to obtain our ingredient, then to the Jatika, Jatika heartland we shall go. Hunmu Rook. Allow me, to, allow me to save you the trip. He's got this syrupy deep voice, doesn't he? Traveling there requires you to go through the Tienbeck. Tienbeck? Tienbeck? I don't know. T let's take a let's take a shot at that. T in Tienbeck. Traverse. But it is caved in due to the recent storm, I expect. What? But that means we can't get our Najul leaves. But we can, can't we? If there were no other way of procuring them, you would have suspended this feat or else altered its objective. I love the, the Rothgar uh, or Shabral uh, mustaches they have. Like the short, dapper version of like the curl tentacles. Perhaps. Anyway, I apologize for the interruption, but having overheard your conversation, I felt compelled to chime in. That's very kind of you. Any last minute advice you'd be willing to share? Only to undertake the feet of her past with an empty stomach. You may find Shibruk Shibibil to be a delicious but daunting dish to finish. I can't wait. Yeah, that's this is a feat that I think she is up for. She has a, she has a shonen protagonist's hunger. Still, if there are no leaves here, we can't travel for more. How are we supposed to gather all of our ingredients? I mean, we have a dirigible still. Probably hire one of them to hop on over. These feats are meant to deepen our understanding of the peoples and cultures of Tulahiolal. So perhaps there is something about Shabruk Pibil that we have yet to learn, something of significance other than its recipe or ingredients. Oh, I see, like, who was the first to make it? It's history, that sort of thing. <clears throat> If it's Yachtel's history you're interested in, you should start with the Old War. That's right, the, the Shabral and Mamulja, that's who it was, that's who they mentioned in the intro that I missed. These forests have borne witness to centuries of warfare, the evidence of which remains a scar upon the earth. To know the end of that bloodshed is to know Shabruk Pibil. Oh, so is it like a dish that came from combining like the favorite foods of both cultures, maybe? Huh? What does steamed Debruk have to do with bloodshed? Or maybe the oh, I'm curious because they could there could be a number of things here. It could be about the ingredients coming together. It could be about maybe they had destroyed their ovens in the war, and so the underground thing, what like uh, underground cooking, uh, underground ovens were like a way to to, to turn trenches or mines into peace. I don't know, something like that. Precisely the answer question we must answer. 
Vexing though such a detour may seem, I can think of no other way to approach this fate. In that case, you may wish to visit the site of a settlement ruined by the war. The village of Ilionasso lies a short distance to the east. Village of, village of Ilionasso? Understood. Thank you for your help. Come, let's go and see this place. Thank you, cheerful cook. You were cheerful and helpful. Where are we going? Oh, shit. That's really far away. Okay. By Night Stalker's Shadow. It's an ominous name for a, a zone section. So we've arrived at this village far to the east. Ilyana So. Abandoned, it looks like. So this is the village of Ilyana So, or what's left of it. Wukavu. It was a place of... Wukavu? It was a place of light and life. My grandfather called it home, in fact. Hello? Hi? Wukavu, I didn't know you were in Yachtel. Yachtel? I think I'm overpronouncing the, uh, the stop. This thing is just Yachtel. Very brief, I think. I was picking up lumber from Ikbrosh when I heard the Third Promise was on her way to the site of deep historical significance. How did you hear? I guess you just overheard. Okay. Um, I immediately saw another opportunity to be of service, so I followed you here. Wukavu is a shipwright who came to our raid during the Feet of Reeds. He has a very weird quirk. A pleasure. You are a member of the Third Promise's retinue, I presume. For the moment, I suppose I am. My name is Kona. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Kona, now that's a good name. A familiar name. Where have I heard? Yet yeah, here come the apologies for not bowing and scraping. Kona is in the second promise of Tulahiolol. To think I addressed the dawn. Oh, here we go again. The dawn servant's own son is some common retainer. Such disrespect cannot be excused. Take up your gun. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> Not this again. I take no offense, so please do not dwell on it. All right, then they shan't dwell on it. It's a funny quirk. It's just, it's, it, it is funny. It does make me smile. And right on cue, at least he's consistent. I understand you wish to take up your gun. He gets extreme with his self-flagellation. I wonder if they're just going to keep building on that. Like, bring your... Skewer me on a pyre. <laughs> I understand you wish to learn about Shabruk Pibiel. While I'm forbidden by the Shabrash Raj to divulge any information regarding its preparation, I would be happy to share what I know of Yachtel's history. We'd appreciate that. In, what, in its most basic sense, the conflict between Shabral and Mamulja was one of land. The Mamulja live in the lower forest, while the thick canopy obscures the sun and the soil. That, uh, well, where the thick canopy obscures the sun and the soil and is unforgiving to crops. This drove them to covet the upper forest, the home of the Shabral, and they launched a determined campaign to seize it for themselves. Yet advantage ever favors the high ground, Anakin, and the Shabral forces held the upper hand against the invaders, rebuffing them time and again. But as the state of this village would attest, the tide eventually turned. What brought it about? Something you know all too well. Blessed siblings. So there was a two-headed... Two-headed, uh, Mamul Ja that... That, like, led them in power, led them in war, that helped turn the tide? You must understand, the Mamul Ja were once a people as much at war with themselves as they were with others. The Hubigo, Bunewa, and Dokro each sought to assert dominance over the others, even as they engaged the Shabral in battle. In an effort to strengthen bonds and discourage infighting, Hubigo and Bunewa leaders arranged a marriage between their children. However, this political measure altered the course of history in ways no one could have ever imagined. This was the first two-headed one. It was long believed that partners of differing clans could not have children together. But then it happened. A child who shared the blood of Hubigo and Bunewa both, a two-headed Mamulja. Blessed with tremendous physical strength and magical prowess, he grew into a mighty warrior, 
before eventually rising, arising as the first Autark, ruler of all three clans. Such qualities would dispose anyone to leadership, character notwithstanding. Under the Autark's, ru Autark Autark's rule, the newly united Mamulja became a force to be feared, and the war soon came to a head. I think it best you see the results firsthand. Let us visit another battlefield from that time, and I shall there continue the tale. Hmm. The Otemu Horizon, we're arriving at the Shobrit Cinderfield. Yeah, this is place has been roasted. Was this part of the magic? Was this like a result of the magic from uh from the the two-headed Mamulja from the Autark? This is where most battles were fought between the Shabral and Mamulja. The Shobrit Cinderfield. A field of cinders, indeed. How fierce their clashes must have been. The war over these lands began after the Yorkwee's departure some 500 years ago. And for four centuries thereafter, the two enemies repaid violence with violence. A constant stream of minor skirmishes, punctuated by massive slaughter. Until father ended their endless conflict 80 years ago. Accompanied by a retinue of only six, the Dawn Servant opposed both armies and brought the fighting to a standstill. Dawn Servant was a friggin' superhero. First they sealed Bali Yarmanda at full strength, and now this. It was during this armistice that both sides gathered for negotiations at the Dawn Servant's behest. It's been a while since we've had an Echo flashback, haven't we? Hasn't it? For too long, you have been bound by your ancestors' violent legacy. It is past time you broke free of it. The little Jaja -Ja may be the only voice actor I don't love. I like him, but I... I he feels like he's... I... Take this with a grain of salt. I might change my mind tomorrow. I may have even said differently in the past, but... His voice acting is not as it feels like it's not quite on the same tier, but I could be again, I could be mistaken. I don't have a great sense of taste for this sort of thing. Tell that to the scales come. We fight to protect what is rightfully ours. If not for their greed, we'd be living in peace. I wonder what, before they invaded, I wonder if there was an attempt to request support or request trade to get use of the of the higher ground. I wonder. Buff your tails and scurry off, then! Cowards like you ill deserve the bounty of this forest. Even should one of you succeed in vanquishing the other, your triumph will last only until a new invader arrives. Is this her first time see hearing the head of the vow of reason? Also, the Autark, I guess, is dead by this point, right? Tell me, do you know of the vast continent that lies far to the east, where numerous nations vie for dominance? I guess it was pretty insular. I you guess this was really not. insular. And why should you? Affairs beyond the salt we have no intention to cross are of no consequence to us. Garlemald would absolutely have made his way here eventually. Come to Tural, like our honor visitor here. This is Ketanra. He's from across the ocean. 
or however you, I'm, I'm Ketan something. Ketan Rom, Ketan Rom. I've been to the ocean before, and it's nothing but water farther than the eye can see. What sort of vessel could possibly reach its end? That such technology exists is indisputable. As is foreign powers awareness of Tural. If any such country were to develop a taste for Turali soil and bring to bear the might of innovations we can only imagine, what do you suppose happens then? You do not know the warlords of the East, but you know that if they came, they would not settle for a single forest. By joining hands, we might create a unified front, an alliance capable of repelling them or any other foe. There is no greater proof of these than my companions and I. Alone we are weak, but together we triumphed over Valigarmanda. Raleigh super friends. What? <clears throat> you defeated the Skyruin? I'd take you for a liar if this thing of our own defeat wasn't still fresh. Their coordination was indeed impressive. How the Pelu Pelu stymied our efforts to cripple the Yoqui's legs and defend our ballistas. And when we <laughs> the to strike Pelu. again from a distance, the Hanu Hanu called the winds to make our arrows miss their marks. In seeking to exploit their weaknesses, we only subjected ourselves to their strengths. Hello. <laughs> yep, Those that's me. Strengths? are born of cooperation. The guiding principle of the nation we envision. But our feud has lasted for centuries. How do you expect us to join hands now? Ha <laughs> ha! Give us an evening to convince you. Yeah, I don't know. I... Uh... I might be mistaken. I kind of changed my mind on on Galul Jaw's uh, voice. I think it's it's fine. It's good at times. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I was just in a bad mood, or I don't. Let me know. What, let me know what y'all think. So began that legendary banquet. One would not expect sworn enemies to abruptly drink to each other's health, and indeed, a tense silence hung over the venue. But then, the dawn servant called for the exchange of traditional cuisine. So it was that the Mamulja partook of spiced meat, and the Chevral steamed Najul. Before long, delight manifested upon the faces of those present, each side impressed by the other's dish. Seeing this, the dawn servant laughed and declared once more, their flavors, he said, would be even better combined. And he proceeded to help them prepare the new creation. That's Seabrook Pibil, I'd wager. <laughs> it is a marriage of Shabral and Mamulja cultures, and proof of their newfound cooperation. The dawn servant had asked for a single evening, but the feasting is said to have lasted three days and three nights. So delicious was their repast. In the end, a peace accord was reached, and the dawn servant's words at that time still illuminate our way forward. The images of like the Not drunk. Begets a strife. The drunk party is was great. Understanding begets fellowship. <laughs> <laughs> 
sorry, sorry. Has she heard those words a lot? It's just to think that he ended an age-old mm. conflict with food. It's all so absurd. That somehow so very papa, I couldn't help but laugh. I like that she's... That she appreciates the... The uniqueness of his strategy and the 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 vastness of his success without feeling like she has to beat him necessarily right now. She doesn't. It, this is not the look of someone who's jealous, who's like, oh, he did all of that. I'm never going to live up to him. I, I think she appreciates it, which is tough to do. Ignorance begets strife. Understanding begets fellowship. Now then, I trust you understand the significance of Shibruk Bibil and the history it has written. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing the story with us. What? What's wrong? Someone was there, you say? Oh, I didn't see them. Perhaps our competition is cooking up some scheme or another. Probably. Nice pun, Kona. <sighs> Something bitter and half-baked, no doubt. Mm. Papa really did live up to his words. He traveled the land and learned about our people's myriad cultures. And we're doing the same now. A History of Violence. Very good movie, by the way. The Feet of Repast. Banana's still way heavily upon Kona's mind. Wukavu has given us valuable insight into the origins of Shibruk Pibil. However, we are still no closer to procuring the necessary Najul leaves, unless... Sorry, let me, let me know if this is too quiet or too loud or, or what you think. Probably, I'm worried about it being too quiet as, the, as it's currently set up. Tell me. What was the... was that historic feast commemorated in some fashion? With a monument, for instance. Indeed it was. Allow me to show you. Because they may show the layout of the dish, too. Something like that. Was this actually where the feast took place? This must have been. Here it is. Offered up by the two factions, these weapons symbolize their vow that they would never raise arms against each other. Since this feat demands a journey through history, I thought it only logical to see that a monument that a monument like this might steer us true. Especially one at the heart of a so significant a battlefield. Lama T, Kukushu, would you help me search the area for clues? Tell me if anything catches your eye. Sure thing! <laughs> Look here, the soil has been recently overturned. Ooh, someone buried a box. With a recipe card in it? Probably not. Well, well. I would have been satisfied to find only a hint, but here they are. Fresh Naju leaves. What were Rook's doing, I'd wager? There's a poetry in hiding them on this battlefield, given that it was central to the war they helped end. Yeah. Okay. Kind of a scav hunt thing. <laughs> so he planned all this from the start. Thank you again, Wukevu. We wouldn't have found these leaves without your help. It was my honor to render assistance. 
And with apologies to present company, allow me to offer my encouragement as well, Third Promise. Ever since I witnessed your performance in the feet of reeds, I've been certain that you... And not that Charlie and what's its face, not that Charlie and Weeaboo are the claimant most worthy of leading our nation. All devised solutions to the Hanu -Halu Hanu's ailing crops, but you alone sought to know their culture and revive Ihihana, even if you see it seemed unrelated to your task. In my humble opinion, no one cares more for the people of Tulhiolal and what they hold dear. Hopefully, this will be valuable for Kona to hear. Because, again, Koda's the innovation thing is not... It's not something that lacks merit. or It's not even something that lacks a ton of merit. It, it, has a ton, it has a ton of merit. It's just, like, you can do that without, uh, without disregarding the traditions that people value, especially as a leader. Should you ever again require the historical musings of an old shipwright, I am ever at your service. For now, I take my leave. And that whole running gag thing, I like that that was a one-time thing this time. It's not, they're not going to make it every five seconds. Like, he's, that's a, sm I like that being a, a relegated to a small part of his character. I get annoyed when the, when things try to feel like they're trying to force you to, how do I say it? When, 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 whether a joke works or doesn't work, repeatedly pushing at it. I get at a certain point that you kind of shoot the moon and it just the constant presence has value. But more often than not, it it, it feels needy. And as someone who's needy, I, I it's something that annoys me. Uh, I cannot argue with that. Thank you. Kona agrees. We have what we need. Let us return to Ikbrash. So are they going to try to hijack our banana leaves now? Feels like yes. It feels like the answer is yes, right? No, it's not. We can just warp back to Ikbrash. Okay. That's very surprising. Mamuk is over there too. Interesting. That's Mamuk is where Um Bakul Jaja -Ja comes from, right? I think he said that. Oh, just a second, I've a cat asking to join me. Come here. Never mind, he's settled down again. I'm glad we were successful. The others should be back soon, I expect. I hope so, I'm famished. Yeah, cooking can do that to you. We haven't even started cooking, though. We've just been assembling the ingredients, I guess. How did everyone fare? We got the Najul leaves. Wukavu came along and helped us find them. Wukavu would he was here. I would have liked to say hello. Yes, he gave us an important history lesson. Yeah, she's passing it on. This is a nice technique, the whole like blah 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 blah, like fade out to share knowledge so that everyone's on the same page, but we don't have to listen to it. And this is important for everyone to hear, because it may impact the recipe and how we go about making the meal. That Galul Ja brought an end to centuries of warfare surprises me little, but to achieve said peace through cuisine is something else entirely. <laughs> Leave it to my old man to find the oddest of solutions. But how about the rest of you? Is your kitchen ready? Everything should be in order. Orion Jane and I made another tour of the village and are the cooking utensils we need, with no mention of what we needed them for, of course. And I am pleased to report that we are stocked with the finest firewood this forest had up on offer. Had on offer. Spoken like a true expert. Erinville and I found our brook, so we should have meat, meat aplenty. 
It was a spirited creature, so much that its hunter fell down a cenote trying to catch it. You probably, like, did a backflip there, like the standard red mage falling and backflipping to the death zone. What part of never speak of this to anyone did you not understand? I picked a good portion of local herbs with particular attention to the seeds that yield achiote. I'm told our resident astrologian to find the appropriate measurements for the seasoning as well. I, though further inquiry, through further inquiry, did I determine the ideal balance of spices. And all that remains is to prepare the dish itself. I presume that at least one of you is for, among us is versed in the culinary arts. I am, I think I'm level 94 or 95 at this point in culin culinarian. I can hardly claim, claim profound skill, but I've cooked for myself. You can leave the rest to me. I'm way better than you then. Or Kakushu is. And you, I hope. As I recall, you are an accomplished culinarian. Hell, hell yes. Oh, my mouth is watering already. The blue and red bottles she has, those are paints, right? Without further delay, then. By the way, I I have to remember where I got this from, but at some point it picked up a uh, wind up uh, a wind up cryl that has the hood down. So I wonder if at some point she's going to go full of hood off in some character development thing. I feel like I've I feel like we've heard at some point that she wears the cat ear hood. Oh, it smells so good. Like she wore it up wore it as like a way to shut things out or to keep some to, to focus or for for like to hide herself in some way and just kept wearing it. But I could be mistaken. Good. There is still time. I shall prepare our sample at once. At first, I wasn't sure about being stuck with the one head. But better that than playing nanny to the mewling house cat. <laughs> Be quiet, Bakul Jaja. No one cares what you think. Get absolutely fucked, Bakul Jaja. Huh. Act up all you like. Victory will be ours. It's ready. So we're making it as like a taco thing? Apologies for the wait. We submit to you our Shibrook Pibil. So like sliced meat, sliced spiced meat on some sort of, uh, some sort of taco. Yeah. Some sort of tortilla. With a little garnish on top, maybe. <gasps> this looks amazing. It does. And yet again today, I'm going to have to get tacos. The dish is prepared by using the culinary techniques of the Mamulja to cook the spiced meats favored by the Jabral. It is a symbol of peace between their two peoples after centuries of war. Hmm. Both the ingredients and your methods appear to have been correct. Now then. It looks so small. Hopefully it's meant to be bite-sized. In taste, texture, and aroma. You have recreated Shibruk Bibil. Admirably. Unlike Food Wars, his underwear will not start flying off, though. Granted, anyone might well achieve similar results by following the recipe to the letter. I appreciate but the acknowledgement there. Went a step further. You sought to learn the cultural significance of the dish, about Yoktel's history of violence and your father's role in ending it. 
Your willingness to take lessons from the past befits aspiring dawn servants. And for that, I commend you. All that remains is to partake of your creation. True understanding is gained only through experience. This is an experience they're going to be very happy to take part in. Now this is something I'm definitely good at. Yes. Ahem. I believe we have yet to receive our assessment. Ours is also a faithful example of Shibruk Pibil, as you will no doubt agree. It looks very similar. It looks about the same. I I'm curious. Does it actually look any different? Is there actually a difference in how the the you know the graphics and like is one darker, lighter? Is it exactly the same uh, model? <sighs> Gets the nod. Is there a gamey aftertaste or what's going on? I see. I'm trying to think what they could be doing. Here's my bet. Here's my guess. What if they just stole it from someone? No, they had to watch them cooking it. They had to see them cooking it. Hmm. It's probably not as good, but like, is it past well, muster? Your effort to look the part. Unlike the second and third promises dish, it lacks its defining aroma. Oh, get wrecked. P -p Preposterous. The meat was marinated in spice before being steamed in an earthen oven. This is Shibruk Pibil. What's the, um, what's the missing step? Oh, and what about the Jatika banana leaf? You didn't go that step. Okay. I, I, it's because of you that we couldn't get any damn leaves. You can't fault us. It does feel a little bit cheap that... He basically gave us leaves if we followed the, the contest. I, I mean, I'll certainly take it, but uh, I would be, if I were in the losing position of this and I was like, I can't get any leaves because I can't get down there in time. And we just kind of followed the history lesson and they gave us leaves there, even though you would have no reason to expect their leaves there. I would be a little miffed on their part, but I, I think it's, I think it's valid. I think it's, I think... But the... the second and third promises had no such difficulty, did they? That which they needed, the they thing. acquired simply by showing interest in our history and heritage. Duh, it's just some crusty old leaf. What difference could it make? How about you try ours? Your dish lacks an essential ingredient. As you have failed to demonstrate an adequate understanding of Shibruk Pibil, I must deem your performance unsatisfactory. Your team will not receive keystones. But they can try again, right? <sighs> this was stupid anyway. He may actually try again. Will he? I wonder. His ambition only grows more intense. That someone could harbor such dark thoughts towards family. He looks the same as he always does. <laughs> I don't know if he's meant to be looking like glaring intensely or if he's meant to be bored or if he's meant to have just like smelled like a piece of chicken and now he's feeling hungry. I His face is always the same. What do I care for this sham of a feat? I can always take what I need later. But like without taking it, he's done basically because they don't have all the keystones so they this can't get in. It's delicious. Hmm. The brook is so tender it melts in your mouth and the way the najul leaf rounds out these spices is sublime. 
The joy in her face. This is the taste of harmony. Someone who only knows brute force and deception could never appreciate it. She's really tall. She's really rubbing it in. Choke on your harmony. Come, come. Finish your meal. That too is part of the feat. You don't have to tell me twice. please you've got real culinary talent if you ever tire of adventuring you can always be my personal chef there's worse jobs and to have in the long run it was palatable enough i suppose is this like the german thing how like germans when they want to say like the food was the most delicious thing they've ever had they'll say like i suppose that was edible To you, who have successfully performed the feat of repast, I present these keystones. Only one feat left. Well, I should get going then. Right, we're not on the same team anymore. Are you, are you joining him or? I'm glad that I uh, wasn't paired with one of the others. We can do better than that, surely. The sixth keystone is ours. Thanks for all your help, everyone. <gasps> I forgot something important. Um, was there any shipbook people left? I could really use another helping. Understandable. Hell yes. Wuklamot. Already looking forward to have Shibuku Biel again. Here, Kukushu. Cryo made more using leftover ingredients. You'll love it. Do I get them as actually quest rewards? I was thinking to buy more for the road myself. Now that the feat of our past is over, the villagers should be free to offer it to us, right? Shibuku Biel. Oh, it's a tabletop thing. The traditional yaktail dish is made by marinating... We used up to 10 times. Wait, what? I'm going to have to test this out. Um, made by marinating the meat of a brook and spices before wrapping it in a Jatika banana leaf and steaming it in an earthen oven. Historically, it symbolizes a peace formed between the Shabral and Mamulja people. Extended by 60 minutes to 60 minutes by consuming multiple servings. Oh, can be used up to 10 times. So, okay. So you can use it twice and then come back and use another. D okay, I got gotcha. you. I see. So it's not an eternal buff. It's okay. Understood. I'm going to call. I know I could. I know I can keep going and that there's um, that I, I know a friend of mine uh, proposed a, a later stopping point. But I've been playing for a long time. And I think this is as far as I want to go for now um, for this session. But let me see what it looks like at home when I put this on the tabletop. This was the, the it was not a wind-up prowl, it's a brush-up prowl. 
On the occasion of the anniversary of Eorzea's rebirth, the Adventurers Guild commissioned a new mammoth designed in Cryo's likeness. With the hood of her Pictomancer's attire drawn back to reveal her precious earring, she exudes a spirit of adventure and discovery. I wonder why they... Because this was from uh, the, the Rising, I think. The recent Rising, I got it. I wonder why they made her with her hair... With, with her hood back. I guess we could just to emphasize the earring so that you could see it? Maybe. We just placed it. And yeah, that looks... It looks pretty good. So... I've never done this before, actually. So we can actually take it. Ten uses left. You partake of the serving of Shabruk Beal and taste sublime. Now we can take two and it buffs us up to an hour. Perfect. All right. That's where I'm going to call it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and I'll see you next time as we continue with the MSQ with A Father's Grief. Bye-bye.